So there wasn't really anything this week news-wise that I wanted to highlight as the title and thumbnail of this video, but you guys who are clicking on this already know what I decided to do here, and I want to talk about the new RNC super light version of the cranks. These things are wild, but you're already seeing the picture, so I don't need to tell you that. But what I will tell you is the information about them, because there have been some changes lately. First of all, RNC is only going to be making two-piece versions of the cranks from now on. This is something I'll be going more in depth on in the future, but I just wanted to get that out of the way first. So when it comes to these super light cranks, literally you can see in the picture that they're machined all the way through the crank and it is crazy. It's from a solid piece of titanium. So there's no welds, no tubing, no weak points that way. And it has that same triangular shape. And depending upon which version you get, whether it's the bolt drive or the spline drive, you can see that it's machined a little bit differently. So I'll show you the bolt drive right now. I personally think the bolt drive looks like super, super sick. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk about these things because they look different than any other BMX cranks out there and the weight people and those who care about it are probably going to be going nuts over these things. When you look at the 19 millimeter spline drive option because that naturally has less material, the 19 millimeter spindle version of these weighs 16.9 ounces for the arms, spindle, and the bolt. That is insane. The bolt drive version weighs just a little bit more at 17.1. Then when it comes to the 22 millimeter options, the spline drive 22 millimeter weighs 18.6 ounces, where the bolt drive weighs 18.8. And I just wanted to talk about these because do I need to say why? They are crazy looking. RNC is backing these and I've met the dude personally. He's not going to sell something that he doesn't believe in or back. And I just thought it was worth mentioning in this video as a first look and maybe I'll be able to see just like a crank arm. I wouldn't personally want to ride these, but I definitely would love to get a hands on with just like one of the crank arms to show you guys. Maybe we can make that happen. I don't know, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I talked about it. So enjoy the rest of the news video now. Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News, a weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. That being said, the first thing that we have to talk about this week is more Olympic news. There's going to be more and more of this coming out as we lead up to it actually going down. I believe it's in July, but with this, Vital BMX is doing a fantastic job covering everything as it comes out. And with that, they put up this article called These Countries Are Going to the Olympics. It's literally just lists of countries. No participants are listed here, so I'm assuming that that list will be coming soon. But for the men, we have the United States of America in the top qualifying spot, getting two riders, as we've already talked about. Then Australia, the Russian Olympic Committee. I think this might have something to do with the fact that Russia was like banned from the Olympics and people can't compete directly under the Russian flag or something like that. And that may be how they got around it. I don't specifically know the details on it, and I'm not going to pretend like I do. Then Great Britain, Japan, Venezuela, France, and Costa Rica. For the women, the United States of America got the top qualifying spot, as we've already said previously as well. Then Germany, Great Britain, Switzerland, the Russian Olympic Committee, Chile, Australia, and Japan. So there are some differences there in the countries between these two different categories. And as we move towards the Olympics starting July 23rd on a Friday, I'm sure we'll be getting more and more information. And I can't wait to see the course that everyone's going to be riding. And it's exciting to see the first nine men and nine women competing in the Olympics for freestyle BMX. Who would ever thought? I know some people don't care, but some people do care. And that's why I want to talk about these things. And I just think it's it's pretty cool, honestly. But then moving on from there, we had the news that Matt Hoffman was in a car accident. Apparently it was a serious car accident, and this is not normally the kind of thing that I like to talk about in BMX news because it's kind of a personal thing. It doesn't really have to do with BMX, but some people might care in every single BMX media outlet talked about this, but it says here in a quote that was uploaded to Matt's Facebook page, it says, hi friends, we need to inform everyone that Matt and JC were in a serious car accident. JC sustained a concussion and broken ribs, but was discharged later that day. Matt sustained a subdural hematoma and is currently in a rehabilitation hospital. 
He's improving quickly and is expected to do very well in recovery. It just takes time. We know so many people love the Hoffmans and wanted to inform everyone as a lot of people have been trying to reach Matt. We ask that you please respect the family and give them space as everyone needs some time and peace to heal. So that last part I feel is the most important part. Give some time and space because everyone needs peace and time to heal. So hopefully Matt's okay. Well wishes to him and JC and hopefully we get to see Matt on his bike cruising as soon as possible. If you guys want to leave your well wishes on his page, please do so. I'm sure that he'll go through and read and it will make his day at some point. I'm sure he's going to be reading these things. But moving on from there, the next thing that I wanted to highlight this week is very exciting and probably coming from the title and thumbnail of the video this week. That is that the Source Battle of the Brands 2 2021 has been announced. The trailers are all released. We have a all-encompassing trailer for the entire thing, which all of these trailers are very short. Then we have trailers for each individual company's team. So we've got Odyssey, Eclat, Cinema, and Shadow all participating in this one. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't watch any of these. I hate spoilers or knowing what's coming for anything. I just wanna see it and see it and appreciate it for what it is without any expectations whatsoever. I do this with movies, I do it with all kinds of things. You guys feel with no expectations, you'll be more pleased with the outcome than if you see a trailer, create some expectations and then potentially get let down. So I'm excited to see all of this. I'm seeing people talking about it and seeing how excited other people are. So that makes me even more pumped up for it. And I'm hoping that this year's Battle of the Brands is even more improved on from last year's. So with that, we can move into talking about the videos from this week. First up, we've got a video from Ohio guy, Gage Sharp, and it's called Out the Window and was uploaded to the RBMX YouTube channel. Gage has been amazing at riding for years now. He has been so underrated in Ohio, he kills it. This dude literally in a video I filmed for him did a bar spin to hang five to bar spin out and he does so much crazy nose manual stuff in this video. Namely the last clip is if you haven't been to Ray's, you can't really appreciate how difficult this nose manual had to have been. And he did this nose manual to a grind down a pretty serious ledge that not very many people mess with on a regular basis. So definitely go and check this one out. Give Gage some love because he deserves it and I hope that this is only the beginning for him because he definitely has potential to move up in the BMX world. Then from there, there's a bunch of videos I thought were worth talking about, but because of this thing, I don't wanna to get too in depth about this. I crashed at the skate park last night. I feel like it's just a sprained wrist, but it's an inconvenience and an annoyance and I just wanted to get this video out for you guys so that you can have your BMX news and then I can get back to chilling on this wrist. That being said, the videos that I thought were worth mentioning that I wanted to list were the Cult Northeast video with Chase Dehart, Brandon Began, and Trev Mags. Then we had a video called Yee Hallahan from SM Bikes. I think this one came out last week, but I missed it or it didn't come out until after I filmed this. But the Hallahan bros are killing it in BMX and they're only getting better as they get older. And it's awesome to see the support from someone like SM who are consistently releasing projects with their riders. And I feel only good things are to come for these guys. And this video with them obviously rips. Then we've got SM and Fathead's 10 year anniversary. If you didn't know it, Fathead has been riding for SM for over or for 10 years now. And this video he put out was an all new video to commemorate that 10 year anniversary. Then we had one with Steven Hamilton, some BMX and skateboarding. It's called Candy Everyone Once, and this one is really solid. Hamilton is like fine wine. He only gets better with time, it seems, and he is still killing it. Then we had two welcome videos for two guys who are long overdue in having welcome videos into the BMX world. First, Sabrosa welcomes Danny Camacho, who has been killing it on another level for so long and to see him get the support of someone like Sabrosa is really, really good. So check out his welcome video if you want to. And then there's another guy who I hadn't heard of because he's a Flatland guy and I don't follow Flatland too closely, but his name is Nick Watts. And the caption for this to his welcome to colony video from Clint Miller says, ever since the early 90s, I've been in all of the riding from Nick Watts. His take on Flatland has always been so amazing and unique. Fast forward 30 years later, and that riding is even more unique. 
And then it said down here, I know Nick was so stoked receiving his first ever sponsorship package in all his riding years. Seeing him like a kid at BMX Miss was golden. Cheers for the good times ahead, Nick. Clint Miller. So the fact that Clint Miller being the legend that he is and the owner of Colony is talking this way about someone who's riding and he's hooking up literally 30 years after he first like knew about this person and had been in all of their riding is just plain awesome, honestly. To see the fact that someone could be hooked up after 30 years or more of riding is just good to see in BMX. And the more people like this that we get hooked up means the more well-rounded the age and demographics of BMX will be. And that means everyone in BMX will have something to be psyched on. I've talked about this stuff for quite some time. And it's just really cool to see someone I hadn't heard of, but who has been killing it for so long, get hooked up by Colony. So that's one for all you Flatland guys out there. If you guys are fans of Flatland, definitely check this one out. Then we had some product related news to talk about this week. First up from Kink, we have the imprint sprocket. You can see a picture of it here. This is machine from seven series aluminum comes in 25 or 28 tooth and either retails for $39.99 or $34.99 according to BMX Union. It also has a raw aluminum version of it available. And then after that, we had one with Julian Molina detailing a fresh build from GT. It's just over a minute long. He's going through the process of building up the bike at Empire BMX. And then it cuts to him going to the rail hop that everyone knows about, the one that Aaron Ross fakey rail hopped and hitting that rail hop on his new bike. So check that one out if you guys are fans of Julian Molina. And then we got a couple different interview things to talk about this week. First up, we had a written bike check from Vital BMX with Tate Roskelly. It's got some pictures of his bike as well as a list of all the parts on it. And then some questions pertaining to his pegs, the weight of his bike and different things like that, the mag. So if you wanna check that one out, it's linked in the description down below. Then after that, we had a video bike check from Fit with Colton Nudson, followed by a Matt Ray Unclicked podcast. I listened to the entire Matt Ray podcast. This dude is down to earth, humble, and really just a cool dude. You can tell how solid of a person he is, and it was a genuinely good listen throughout. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to this one yet, it is definitely worth your time. That being said, that's the last thing we have to talk about this week. If you have any thoughts on anything that we talked about in this news video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new or you haven't yet, while you're down there, hit the subscribe button so that we can hopefully see you tomorrow for another video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.